There he is. Hello, John. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Audio good? Uh, now it should be better, yeah. These headphones are finicky. Like me, like their owner. <laughs> Looking pretty good. We'll give it a few minutes. Make sure everybody gets here. Okay, cool. Claire is here. Rick is here. This will be recorded, John, and um, obviously put up on where the uh, links are to this thing. Um, right. But um, you know, you, I can send you a copy of it or whatever if you want to use it for your marketing as well. Certainly fine with me. Yeah. <clears throat> I might be able to do something with this, yeah. That way well, you can put it up under your own brand. <clears throat> Provided that the photographers that I talk about their work, they're cool with that, then I'd be cool with it. Yeah, I, at the at the very least. Yeah, I kind, of, I kind of uh, gave them a heads up that, I mean, this is public. It's, it is being recorded, so. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, one of our photographers who wanted to do it couldn't do it because it was actually a job she'd done for a client and didn't want Oh, to. yeah. Yeah, you got to be that careful be with that. Hassle. That can be, mm -hmm. as we all know, that can be a hassle. Sure can. Oh, man. So oh, Virginia's here. Sophie's here. Hi, Sophie. Hi. Sophie, of, of the photos, so Sophie? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, and Sarah. Thank you so much for that opportunity, John. That's really grateful for this. Thank oh, you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. I get to look at pictures for the next hour. I'm pretty psyched about it. And I don't have to work too hard to make them and not work at all for them. So it's even better. And, and I didn't I didn't hear <laughs> I didn't hear back from you. You did get Sarah's folder as well, right? Of uh, Jennifer Polish. Yep. 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 Sarah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Very good. Hold on, my pen just uh, all right. So this is Sarah's folder. Isn't it fun to talk about photographs? I have, uh, actually, you want to know something funny, um, Don, is um, now I just did uh, three modules with uh, the four photographers in my training, and um, I just wrote an article about how the intangible benefit of talking about photos has actually created an opportunity for me to become emotionally invested in someone else's work in a way that I never thought would be possible because it's always been about my work, how I'm being perceived by my audience, how my business is growing. And now it's like, you know, you're like the proud papa watching these people actually do the work, get, and more importantly, have the insights. And it's just been really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a big podcaster guy because I mean, fo I mean, some podcasts I listen to, but I don't listen to photographic podcasts because to me, it's such a visual medium. Right. Um, but I do like uh, listening it, listening to those few photographic podcasts that actually talk about philosophy. I'm more interested in why than how. Yeah. Um, because to me, partly because I've been doing it for 50 years, the how isn't that hard. I can figure it out. It's not rocket science, it's photography. But the why is still a huge, you know mystery so many times you look at the photograph and you know you think well if i show a photograph to somebody they obviously know all that i put into that photograph no they don't they don't no. have a clue it's no it's you know pixels and they go oh but you when you talk about how it came about it becomes i think so much more exciting and i think talking about photographs with photographs in front of us yeah that is really 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 powerful it's magical and i'll i'll uh, i i'd even go so far as to say is the why is absolutely essential but the other thing to keep in mind when you specialize in niche and not even the how it's the what you have to know why you're doing this why these people need this stuff why do i have to photograph it in a certain way and then what is the thing that i'm photographing because it's not always so crystal clear, depending upon what genre you're doing. There are some that are absolutely concrete. You know exactly what it is. You're repeating the process over and over mm -hmm. again, or you're iterating a foundational principle to create these types of images 
to make it look even better and different from the last time. But for some, and, and particularly for my branded lifestyle portrait work, it's, it's what am I shooting? Because everybody's a little bit different and you have to tailor what you're shooting to those, the needs of those particular people, because some sets of photos will work with one type of client, whereas the other ones, they're complete, uh, completely different. So it's, um, it's a really interesting process um, by which to figure out why you're doing what you're doing and how, and, and what you're doing. And then the how comes after. Yeah. And the, and the how, the how can be learned. The why has to be ingested slowly as a photographer you have to come to understanding the why and the, mm -hmm. and the what the, the what is always tricky especially in what you do because i think people are not as open as they think they are telling you what they want and that's why you have to ask very hyper specific right. questions to drill right. down to get those wrinkles and nuances that's that's the secret sauce the secret sauce that uh, works for this type of work is um, asking questions and really uncovering everything and strategizing before you pick up the camera. So you have a very clear, uh, comprehensive shot sheet staring back at you. And you're able to then be able to, when you walk in, it's not overwhelmed, like, oh my God, where the hell do we start? I don't know what's going on. No, it's this, then this, then this, then this. The next step is where within the space. Then it's what's the variety within that, that particular activity, the types of shots to get, the types of expressions we need to be able to convey aspects of their personality. And then to be able to frame out all the crap that you don't want and be hyper specific in those wide, medium, and close up shots and create those clusters of images that then uh, become, you know, compounded one uh, scenario after another becomes that comprehensive portfolio. And yeah. um, it's fun. It's a hell of a lot of work. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen uh, who've joined us, uh, I'm speaking with John D'Amato. John is a um, I guess the specialist in personal branding photography. That's how you would say it, John? I, I would call myself a, uh, a visual storytelling expert who serves expert-based business owners. Okay. And he, uh, he was a TV producer, so he understands narrative. And he's got a wonderful website with all kinds of things and also has a class, I believe, that you're you're doing so the link to his website will be on our page where you found the link to this so you can go over and check him out as well uh and today he's going to look at who are you going to do first john who wants me to go first sarah sophie doesn't matter we're yeah. gonna have to we're gonna have to rule out um uh alphabetization because they both got s's so we can't do that. well so uh, it, 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 I got it. Here's how. Oh, go ahead. You go. You Let's tell do me. Sarah. She's on the left. She's like on the left side of my screen. That makes her like one when the English language really left to right. So there we go. <clears throat> okay. Um, so before I start, uh, Sarah, um, can I see you? Where are you? Let me go into, let me go into gallery. I've got the snowman. There she is. Okay. I see you. So Sarah, um, before we start, um, who is this person that you photograph? Um, so she is a former actress or maybe current actress. I don't know, but she's starting a coaching business. Um, and when I talked to her, it was very sketchy as to what she coaches. Um, you know, I think she's since narrowed it, sort of narrowed it down into like STEM based careers um, and really focusing on sort of diverse personalities and people. Um, and in some of the shots, you can see she's got a whiteboard, uh, or not a whiteboard, a flip chart up, and she's kind of wrote LGBTQ on there and all that kind of stuff. So I think she's sort of targeting that market. Um, but I mean, her website indicates that she works with some fairly large companies, corporate, you know, KPMG, you know, that type of thing. Yeah. Your businesses so okay um, but uh, I didn't 
get into a ton of it, you know, to be perfectly, I'm, I have a corporate background. I, I'm a consultant by day. I work with big businesses. She was very disorganized, didn't really, really know what she wanted, very hard time describing what she wanted. So to me, I was a little perplexed by the fact that she was a coach. Okay. And now so I'm saying I, I'm realizing it's going to be on the internet, so. Don't worry about that. This is not, this part won't be on the internet, but uh, I, I have some thoughts about what you just said, but I will not get into them just yet about her being disorganized and not knowing what she wants, because there's a nugget there that I'd like to impart on you, both of you and everybody paying attention, not knowing what she wants. Okay. I just need to write that down for myself for later. If I don't get into it naturally within the flow, because I, I looked for about 25 seconds to make sure that I can open it. Cause I hate Dropbox. And I just wanted to make sure I could get the icons big. Um, now I, let me, um, Oh, uh, before that. Uh, so despite her disorganization, what made you come to the conclusion to shoot these particular types of lifestyle and promotional shots? So when I first started, to your point, asking a lot of questions about what she was looking for and where she was looking, it, it was a, well, I want an indoor and an outdoor shoot. Fine. Where do you want to, you know, where do you want to shoot? And so we started looking at places in Manhattan that you could kind of rent out, you know, like corporate office -y kind of places. We found some really cool locations. Um, and then um, I had found a couple places um, in the upper 50s that, you know, there's a, those buildings that pass that you're in New York, right? Yeah, you shot in Brooklyn, those, like on, yeah, I noticed yeah, that. Yeah, not not too far from you. But um, they uh, there's a couple places in Manhattan where, like, there's a half street that crosses between two of the avenues or, you know, for, two of the avenues and stuff that are kind of outdoorsy. And again, the buildings are very cool in those areas. So I had suggested that. Um, and then she was responsible for finding the locations and just couldn't come to terms with any of these people that were renting out the indoor places. So we decided to do it in her apartment in, in Brooklyn, which is a lot bigger than any apartment I would have expected to find a single person living in in Brooklyn, to be perfect. <laughs> so, I mean, it was okay. a pretty big space compared to, like I said, and she had a desk in there. She had a kitchen table. She, you know, cleared out an area where her couch was that we set up chairs for her to do group coaching and stuff. And um, so, I mean, the space worked and the ceilings were high. So that, that was helpful as well. Good. And yeah. then in terms of, um, oh, uh, where is she going to use these photos initially? She just wanted them for her website. She was completely remodeling her website. And Don, I don't know if you remember, this was like a year ago, but she was looking for someone to help her with her website. And I yeah. had referred her to you. I, I don't think she ever got in touch with you. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, her website was an absolute disaster. And now the guy who did it uh, was in Seattle and he cleaned it up quite a bit. Um, okay. But, so it's basically uh, just, it was just basically for the website for her, yeah. for now. That was okay. the plan, yeah. Okay. All right. And I have thoughts on that, too. But we'll get back to that. Uh, like I said, either role, because I don't know what I'm going to say. I'm just going to look at these and we're going to start talking. Yeah. All right. Let me share screen. Let's see if it works. From Wow. Why do I have so many options to share a screen? This is overwhelming. Oh, there we go. Can everybody? Oh, damn. It's coming. Yep. You, got, you, you guys can all see this. You can see the Dropbox. Yep. yep. Great. Okay. Hold on. Let me make sure I could see you because this is really odd. Okay. There we go. All right. So I see the little strip. All right. <clears throat> so the first thing that I see is that you're doing some direct address portraits and that's good. Um, let me just do a continuous look through. Okay. So we got some wider portraits. I, don't, I see some lifestyle. I see the facilitation shots. Okay, great. And then we have more coaching one-on-one. -on -one. And then we have some outdoorsy portraits, direct address. Okay. So the first thing that I notice within this set is that there are no dedicated headshots. So that uh, when putting together an image content portfolio for lifestyle portraits and other, other images, um, always get a headshot where it's top of the head to the top of the chest. Now, granted, can some of these be used? Absolutely, but give them the option of giving them the tight shots that are ready to go right off the bat. 
because you want to create as much diversity in your image content portfolio as possible. And just wide, uh, the direct uh, address portraits where she's wider is obviously very important and you need to get that. Um, but always keep in mind that there needs to be a headshot as well. With that being said, I see you did a couple indoors right here. Um, now off the bat, I like this shot because it's confident and the crop is really nice and you're leaving a lot of negative space here for her to be able to use as say a website banner because we're talking websites, we're not talking social um, or any other types of the 50 million things that she doesn't even know she needs. And um, eventually, hopefully she'll come to understand that you need more images than just for a website. <clears throat> or your content, especially for some, she would be, she would fall in my wheelhouse of the type of client that I, that would hire me, uh, should it be a fit for multiple reasons. But um, this shot really works well. Lighting is great. The, the, the lines are good. This is clean. I like it. This shot. She was also, to your point, John, she was looking for like the website she sent me as a, uh, a sample. They were all the ones now that you're starting to see people with very long, like thin you know cut in you know what i mean like the pictures were very long and thin and i kept saying to her we really need to think about the proportions of those photos to be able to enable that type of website she was struggling with that concept and i tried to send her a couple examples but so we were trying to get things that were going to sort of fit into that and i it just you know this type of thing was it was a bit of a struggle but right so I'll just get into what I was going to say at the end right now. So the person that's driving the car within this entire experience between you and your lifestyle portrait client is not the client. They don't know a damn thing. What they know is they want to look good, they want to look expensive, and they want to look like they're worth every penny they charge. Your job is to tell them every single thing that they need, whether or not they know it or not, whether or not they believe it or not. And as a result, uh, the questions that you ask are not within the sense of um, uh, what do you think you need? It's more about who are you? Who do you serve? What are the problems you solve? And how do you solve those problems? Those four headings are your guideposts for every single session that you shoot for these types of people. I'm not talking about anything other than someone like this. Your job is to create questions that alludes to the fact that you know what they already need. You just need to know specifically these details about who they are to inform the way in which you craft their image content portfolio. They don't know a damn thing. Um, some of them have more of a sense of uh, what visual storytelling actually is, and that's great. But by and large, most people don't realize a lot of these little nuances that you were talking about with the banner and all of those things, because at the end of the day, they're busy doing whatever it is that they do, or in this person's case, God knows what she does, because apparently you can't even figure out or assess from the conversation what she actually does, which is scary. But that being said, um, when you go in with the approach of having a pre conceived list of questions that is standardized for you to be able to ask every single person, which will create unique answers. There will be overlap with everybody, of course, but there, most of all, you're going to find out all of these different um, aspects of their personality, how they serve their people, and specifically how they solve their problems. Now, within this portfolio, after scanning it, I can see two ways in which she solves problems. She facilitates and she does one-on-one -on -one personal coaching. So that's good. Um, but in terms of, you know, what, how does she want to be perceived by her audience? Uh, um, how does she actually brainstorm her ideas? What does work look like to her outside of just being client facing? That also needs to be accounted for to be able to create those assets that show the whole process. Um, <clears throat> so with that being said, this shots, I, I like this shot a lot. She looks really confident. And by the way, they can crop it because the money of the image is this right here. That's the money. Yeah. And she looks confident. She's leaning. Everything looks good. The shirt looks good on her. This one, um, the energy just got completely sucked out. However, if this photo were cropped where you don't see her sitting back, the energy still pops because the jawline looks good. The smile looks good. Lighting looks nice. Everything is good. But this posture 
is not confident enough for someone who's supposedly a shepherd of people uh, in their development. <laughs> um, okay, so now we're going, oh, let me go back to the, the square things. Hold on, I don't wanna do one-to-one. -one. Here we go, because right, I wanna see them as a whole. All right, so for these three, let's just rock with these three as a shot. So number one, um, this is fine and that's fine. The, uh, but but here's the thing about these kinds of shots, uh, these two right here. We'll get into this in a second. Um, so when you have someone looking away like this, it it it's cool to um, get them looking away this way while they're on a laptop because you know she's thinking to herself, she's formulating. But what I would say is a yes and to this, because this is a fine photo, but yes and to what this is, is think, and actually this is a fundamental overarching thing that I'm going to get into with every single scenario you have here, which is explore the play space from different vantage points. Because what I see here is basically eye level for all those three shots right off the bat. And um, maybe start thinking about going a little lower, shooting a higher angle down, uh, uh, capturing it from where you're using, uh, you're getting in a little tighter, maybe using the laptop as a, as a design element that's negative space. And then you're framing over where you see her face from a lower angle looking off camera because the emotional sentiment of shooting low, high from the left, from the right, playing around the space is much stronger because now you're um, creating more opportunities to be able to pad that portfolio in a way that's giving her valuable imagery that she doesn't even realize she could leverage in different ways. So think about that kind of stuff uh, when you're shooting this kind of, and also what I would say is get her typing on that keyboard, get her reading what's on the screen, different types of activities. So it's not all just the same stuff of kind of looking at the screen from that one point, get that coffee cup out of her hand, she's typing, she's do ask her what the posture is when she's reading something. Does it look like? Sorry. I lost John's audio. I'm sorry about that. You hear me now? Yep. Okay. Yes. Yeah, somebody tried to spam me from Connecticut. <laughs> um, so you want, you want to get, and I, and she just, that, that just interrupted what I was saying. Shit. Um, um, Different vantage yeah. points, different yep. expressions. Action, at, yeah. Different, okay, right, thank you, thank you, yeah. Like going over the posture, like do, do they do this? Do they do this? Do they do this? And then you get to play over the shoulder from the side, close, wide, medium, you know, typing on the fingers close up. Now, when you have a shot like this, this, this one brings up a very important thing that I'd like to impress upon everyone. You're either shooting, when you're shooting lifestyle portraits, you have one of two options. A, it's a promotional image where they're either, it's a headshot or a wider portrait where they are directly making eye contact with their audience. Or B, they're in the work that they're doing. The activity that is being captured within that moment is candid and as candid as can be during a, I, I refer to it as contrived authenticity, where, where it's clearly you're staging it but you want to make it feel as genuine to the moment as possible based on their body language, facial expression, and wherever they're placed within the scene, right? So when you have someone sitting by a laptop looking at the camera, you're breaking the fourth wall unnecessarily. Either they're looking into the, uh, into the camera or they're, or they're doing their thing. Just keep that in mind because this is a confusing image to the audience because we want to give them that, those direct address portraits where necessary, specifically for someone like her who's probably who's going to do speaking engagements and facilitate. She's going to need these promo images to help promote these things down the line should she get her shit together. So as a result, you just get those shots clean. And then when she's working, you get those shots uh, separate from the promotional images. Does that make sense? Yep. Cool. Let's move on to the next. All right. So I see three. Okay. We got two lappies. We'll talk about that. That's cool. Um, so this shot works. Uh, it just, I, I, and I know, listen, you're working in a limited space and you're doing the best you can to create variety. And I can see that already. It's like, how the hell can I use the same desk in multiple ways and make it look interesting? And it is challenging. So you did, you did that here. Um, and it's fine. Um, 
the next shot is like a thinking she's thinking to herself now this is something that i incorporate in every shoot but i don't just do it like one shot like there anytime i'm shooting a scenario whether it's a lifestyle scenario or a portrait scenario i'm always on the lookout for opportunities for the client to just look up and look away and think to themselves kind of like what you did in that first shot where she was sitting and typing right so for this one what i would say is um well first of all it's a little toasty here bring her down Second thing is, if you're going to get a shot like that, um, the wide is good because you're trying to account for negative space. But what I would also say is play up here, play up here, get in tighter and play with the lighting in different ways. Because what you could do is like this one's a full light. By the way, are you using um, uh, what are you using to light her? I brought I brought a couple um, strokes. Okay, so what I would suggest is for these types of images, especially for a coach who deals in vulnerability, uh, they don't just need the bright, full, happy, I'm thinking, because yeah. the stuff that they share online always ain't going to be sunshine and roses. And in fact, the people in which they serve, regardless of whatever her particular flavor of coaching expertise happens to be, uh, they're dealing with people that are dealing with a lot of stuff in one shape or form. So shooting the dark side, getting a little Rembrandt going, going a little drama, like think about that as well. Like close the blinds on the window, just kick off two of the lights, bring one over, create the dark side, bang those out, have her change her vantage point of where her eyes are so that it's not one shot repeated four to five times. It's four to five different shots. And then you sprinkle in some black and whites to be able to add even more visual variety and change the vantage point and on a technical thing here move her off this this lamp thing because it's distracting yeah. we want yeah. that face to be the star of the show use that thing get her against the white wall or you move over a little bit so her her profile clears that thing and use it as an element to play with so it breaks up the wall and play with the lighting um let's keep it rolling because i don't Okay, the laughs are, those are always fun. Um, but that thing's distracting as hell. Yep. I could see one of your lights now. Yep. Yeah. So just be what because and by the way, it's the biggest pain in the ass, especially when you're working in a co uh, co working space. But you got to pay attention to it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's nice too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Watch the headroom on these. Give her a little more yeah. room and. Okay uh oh she looks good see that one's cool you did your best to work around the highlights it's not in the iris i wouldn't bust your chops about that i also like that you moved her off this thing and now the reflection in here is of no consequence because you can't tell um yeah yeah yes yeah, that's, that's good she looks good in glasses specifically uh if she presents or if she's client facing in glasses it's good to get the glasses on glasses off thing so good um yeah get the laptop and stuff out of there but yeah. but otherwise the posture is good she's all right uh okay now she's writing so same philosophy oh wait let me see if you did it first before i open my big mouth okay you did it so i'm going to talk about it so for these two um they're basically the same vantage point. So everything I said before about moving around, exploring the play space, why repeat. <laughs> and also, so shots like this, like when it when you have this element going on and this element going on, get her to look down and actually start fake writing some crap. It doesn't matter what she writes because you're not going to shoot that. What you're going to shoot is the close-up of the pen tip, the close-up of the hand yeah. from this vantage point, from that vantage point, up above, shooting her looking down and writing. I mean, you have a wealth of opportunity to create visual variety from just this one activity, just moving around the space and playing in wide, medium, close, and high and low. Um, but she does look happy and that's nice. And the lighting is clean for the moment. Oh, there is a shadow there. Never mind. It still works though. It's fine. Because it could be daylight. Um, okay, so we're in client consultate. I love this picture. This is great. The over the shoulder is money. Um, this part doesn't bother me at all. It's fine. 
Um, it's all there. The one thing I will say is um, lighting wise, and yeah. here's the thing, I don't go nuts. I don't go nuts about lighting with my, uh, the participants in my course, but I will say since we have this opportunity, there would be, so all I use is one light on all of my shoots. One light. Wow. It's a, it's a B1X with a two foot octa and a 40 degree grid on top of it. And everything else is blended. And the reason why I do that is because you see shadows like that, yep. they don't exist in my world. And in, and as a result, you only have to deal with dealing with ambience in terms of what that creates and then, uh, or practical lighting in the room and then what I'm creating. So I can tuck my shadow uh, in most cases, fairly easily, depending upon where I'm at. But but in terms of this shot, this is one talk that that's a great over shoulder. And um, what I would also suggest with this, let me see if you did it. You might do it later on, possibly. So we won't get. But I will say, just looking at these right here is um, you just basically need to um, get her writing and looking down and listening and holding the pen. Same thing as the activities before with the laptop, like all of these philosophies basically apply to everything. So I just want to reiterate that point here. Um, the other thing would be to try to find different angles. And also um, when you're shooting people like this, so far, these are pretty good because I can't see the likeness of the person. Always be cognizant of the fact that you have to anonymize the person as much as possible sitting in the other chair because then it becomes an opportunity for her audience to visualize what it looks like to sit in that chair with that person. And that's one of the hallmarks of lifestyle portraiture for uh, experts like this. You want to be able to let people visualize them being in the room. Okay, so just, and I don't know if you, yeah, this one's too much. This next one, you see her profile too much. She needs to turn. Well, she could have had her chair turn the other way, cross the other leg, go, and then basically give you shoulder looking at her. And um, <clears throat> that would have been more uh, effective in that sense. And also visual variety, trying different things from different places. And I know it sucks because you're in that one little corner, but I already can see a couple of different vantage points you could have squeezed out by moving people around just slightly. Um, I don't know what this is. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So you cut out a banner like that. Yeah. Just yeah. Just so yeah. Yeah. It's not bad. Next time. Yeah, with their face. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, kind of important. And plus, yep. you stage this, you drive the car, tell her to do the damn thing again. And you'll uh, we nail tried it a couple time. times and none of the other ones came out. So, yeah. So, by the way, and that's a good point you bring up. If something isn't working while trying to create it in the moment with the hand clap, take the damn thing. Slide over a little bit. Go, put them in position and then say something stupid, funny, whatever, inspirational, blah, 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 to get the emotion on the face. Because otherwise, it's just going to look really staged and crappy. You, but you want the positioning to be right. And then yeah. you splash personality on after the fact. Yeah. All right. So this is good. Yeah, I like that. She's doing the speaky thing with the hand with the fan. That's good. That's good. We like that. That's good. Um, same. She looks like she's looking at you. That's a no-no. She's breaking the wall. I don't think she is, but it kind of feels like she is. Uh -huh. um, yeah. The other thing would be this. Um, when you're shooting when you're shooting something like this, it says three pillars. Yep. Get over there and shoot the marker over shoulder as she's writing on the flip chart. Yep. Or, if she, or if it's a whiteboard or whatever. So you're on... You're on this side of the shot, getting her from here. If she's a righty, you're getting that. If it, if, and then and then you go to the other side. Think about close-ups of the pen. Then shoot over shoulder to get certain words, and then that way, that's additional content for her. Now, granted, it's for her website only. That might not be relevant, but the fact of the matter is. Um, you don't know if she sees these and all of a sudden is like, well, we have these photos. I'm going to use them for social. So just keep that in mind because you're giving them stuff that they don't even know they could need very soon. Um, yeah. 
broke the wall here. You already know I'm not going to repeat myself, but this is cool. Same thing with this, right? When she writes out LGBTQ plus thing, like get that close up of the hand, writing it and all that stuff. That, that'd be good. Um, this one, I love the expression. I like this body movement. Get over behind the guy so you can see where this, this hand coming out of nowhere is coming from. So there's more context to the background of the image. Plus, when you do that and you move over and you're over his le the left shoulder, what you get to do is use the back of his head to frame that out even better. Now, I get that you're getting all of her stuff in the corner, and that's fine. But this shot's not about her branding. It's about her expression and being in the moment and being a coach and listening, actively listening. So as a result, when that hand swings up, you get a couple of frames of the guy talking because his arm is going to change motion, and it could make the frame within the frame even more powerful. Some of them are going to look like shit, and that's okay. Your job is to stick out that moment until you get a couple of options for yourself. And then if you have two of that work, one's in color, one's in black and white, bingo. Especially if she changes her facial expression, then it's a different shot. Great expression here. Love that. And you moved over a little bit to frame the guy in. That's good. Move him over even more because this little space here is a little off, but that's okay. Point is great expression here, and that's really nice. <clears throat> and you're getting verticals for her too, which I hate verticals, but I am not someone to besmirch someone's dream of shooting vertically. If you like those and they think it's it's actually usable, then get the damn thing. But I hate them more than life itself, especially when they're little peanuts in the shop like this, but I get it. Um, Can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay, sorry, I got another call. Everybody loves calling me on Fridays while I'm trying to do this. Um, okay, same thing with everything here. These are all pretty good. Um, I would explore again, wide, medium close-ups on the shots. I, I see you moved in a little bit here, that's good. Um, and then in terms of, okay, so you moved, you, is this the same table as before? No. No, that's our kitchen table. Okay. Because I see, Similar. I see you, I see you experimented. That's good. And this is the the angle that I was hoping you'd get from the first round, like this shot, this side, yeah. all sides, all the time for everybody, as as much as humanly possible. Uh, expression is good here. She's making eye contact. That shadows a little, but that's okay. It's okay. Um, yeah, these shadows are a little strong. So yeah. just you know, play with it a little bit, but. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of that expression and that expression, it's wonderful because they're two completely different expressions. That's what we want. Um, and I, it's fine to person, I guess one, but be careful not to really shoot the person. This is much more valuable to your client. This is valuable to the person sitting in the chair. This is the person that pays you money. And this is the person doing the solid. Always keep that in mind. Um, all right, so we're outside, we're in Brooklyn. I like it, nice different expression here, that works. Lighting is, did you use additional light or you use whatever was available? Yeah, that was a natural light. All right, my suggestion to you is uh, some, a little extra something, something just to make it pop a little bit more. Yeah, it was amazingly windy that day. I had to pick out, I picked out the pictures where her hair wasn't flying all over the place. Oh God, yeah. oh, what a nightmare. Yeah. What a nightmare, but you did the best you could and that's all you could, that's all you can do. Um, yeah, vertical's fine. This is fine. I, I, I mean, this shot feels really good for her. She looks confident, very, um, you know, uh, uh, someone that you can trust with, uh, your money, which is exactly what her clients are trying to assess as they look at her website. So that works. Um, not the hugest fan of these power pose things. Sometimes I allow people, and if they're going to do it, do it straight on and turn it into a thing and make it the way it is, because otherwise it just feels like you're trying to find something for her to do with her hands. Was that the case? Was I trying to find something to do with her hands? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I don't think that that was her natural pose. Yeah, and that's the other thing. Always ask them if that's something I they do. normally yeah. do, because if they yeah. don't, don't do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, this one needs a little help and this stuff's a little distracting. Yeah, so yeah, you stick to the one, the, the, the safe bet. I know you're trying something, but yeah, just, 
yeah, no one cares about all that crap. And that doesn't scream, you know, uh, authority in her space of expertise. So we don't want that. But the expression is good. Lighting, you know, and that's good. Confident. Just the arm thing. Um, this is how I knew it was Brooklyn, by the way, because I I remember this when I went to grad school in Brooklyn College. Um, this is good. I like this. This is probably the closest thing you have to a headshot. The only thing I will say um, is get that chin up. Watch that jawline, number one. Number two, get it a little away from the brick. I like the perspective falling off, especially you have her justified, but it's clean enough so that she could be squared out in a, in a, um, a profile image. That's great. But, you know, what are we shooting at? Four, five, six? Where are you at? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Even... yeah. yeah. When they're flat to the camera, open the damn thing up when you're outside. Get them a separation from the background yeah. so it blurs out and looks pretty. Um, but otherwise, it's that's her headshot. And then same thing, we already talked about that. Yeah. Oh, yep. okay, and that's it. All right. Was that okay for you? Yeah, that was awesome. Thank you. I know, definitely. And definitely something to think about with getting, you know, I, I knew I should have been moving around a little bit more in each of those photos. I think I was conscious of trying to get things done quickly and move the light around to make sure that I wasn't getting as many shadows as I did. So I think that that was sort of limiting me and, and the wall being where it was didn't help. So, um, well, but yeah, and no, here's, definitely. yeah. And here's the other thing, uh, if, if for lighting explore with a smaller thing with a grid, so you can control where the light goes and you'll be amazed because all oh, you got it. And then just, just ride the shutter and just play with it to be able to increase what you need. We work with monster cameras these days, you know, the ISO sensitivity really plays to our advantage. You don't have to overlight these things. You, what you really need to do is focus on them. And I, and, and I hope that's what the biggest takeaway of this is what uh, was for you. Um, yeah. yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, Don, and oh, I'm sorry, Don, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think one of the, the important things that you said, um, for me is like when you, and it's the hardest thing to do when you're a photographer and you're starting out because photographers are by nature people pleasers. It's like that's what we want to do, we want people to really be happy, and we hesitate saying to someone, Look, I'm the pro. This is what you need. I'll give you what you want, but I'm going to give you what you need. And that's even more. Sometimes we're a little hesitant to do that. And we should. Yeah. No. And Don, the, be, the way to get the permission to do what you do is set from the very first minute of the very first call that that person has with you. Because you have to set the tone that this is the way this works. Now, granted, not every client is going to come in trying to do this, right? Um, I don't actually work with those kind of people anymore because they suss them out during that initial call. Because qualification is a two-way street, not just them hiring you. It's do you want to work with this person? And once you know that you have that uh, rapport back and forth and can communicate effectively what it is that they need, then those little things won't become a problem during the session because you would have talked about it in the initial call, during the strategy call. And then when we're there, it's, it's just more or less uh, playing, out, playing out the game that was created in the shot sheet. And by the way, Sarah, with, with regards to, um, I didn't have time, I was running, I was this and that, that only impresses, needs to impress, um, um, I'm losing my words. Um, that's all the, the reason why a strategy call laying out all the particulars at the very beginning is essential because if you know you only have X amount of time and you need to do X amount of uh, lifestyle and promotional uh, scenarios, that means you have to you get to prioritize out of the maybe 10 to 12 things that were discussed. And then you realize we're up against it on time for reasons that may be beyond your control. You are able to know, well, we're cutting this, this, and this, and we're focusing just on this. And as a result, there is no running around because now you have the ability to kind of work around it without thinking you're always falling behind <clears throat> because you have given yourself permission to prioritize and cut certain things that aren't as important out based on the timing of what's going on. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Okay. 
All right, Thank so you. we'll move. You are welcome. Thank you for sharing your photos with us. I appreciate it. You had some lovely ones in there. And she better like these damn things. She she was a she was very particular. We'll say that. Mm. The ones who don't know uh, what the hell they're doing generally particularly uh, are. They're fun, right? All right. So Sophie, <clears throat> where are you? Oh, there you are. Hi, hi, hi on the bottom. How do I make this thing bigger? I'm tired of looking at a small little box. It's so weird. That's okay. Uh, okay. So uh, who is this person or people? People, there's two. It's um, yep. two ceramists. They share a creative space, a very, very tiny space <laughs> mm -hmm. where it's both the shop and the creation area. And um, I was trying to document all aspects of what they do. Mm -hmm. uh, we missed some, well, we didn't have friends available to play the clients. And uh, I wished we could have, I wanted to work on how they get inspired, where they get their inspiration from, but it's actually from books. So that was harder to, I, I was hoping they would go out in nature or something like that. And we could go out uh, in nature and that did not happen. So yeah, I tried to, to, to document um, everything, uh, their process. Well, Okay, so you bring up something here, Sophie, that should be brought to attention. You ask the right question, what inspires them, but you didn't like their answer, and therefore you scrapped it. That's a missed opportunity. There's a photo in there where I did try, but I was not the book? happy with the result. Yes, the books, they're both looking at books. Uh, I think it's in the... I might not have put it in this selection, but I did do it. I didn't give up. They brought the book, but I was very unhappy with the. No, not this. This is when she's thinking and laying. That's out. her notes. Yeah, I figured That's her as notes much. for the yeah. weight and the colors. And um, I did try the shot, and I was just really unhappy with my lighting, and so I did not put it in. But I did do it in in okay. the, in house. Okay. And that, if that be the case, then um, option B would have simply been to shoot close ups of hands on books, shooting titles of the books, the ones that is it like one particular book that inspires them? Yeah, yeah, each each have one very specific book. Yeah, perfect. Because what could have happened in that scenario is, well, a keep fighting the line until you get it right, uh, depending upon how much time you had, which is obviously a harder question to answer because it wasn't there and I don't know how much time you had. But aside from that, the easiest way to be able to get this, uh, they're using these for social media, I'm assuming, to promote the ceramics. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so right off the bat, that tells me get close ups of the book cover and the spine by itself on a table that is easy to get and you could okay. have nailed that. So think about that next time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, good. All yeah. right. So this one's really more about lifestyle portraits that are candid showing them clearly because they're not staging this they're actually doing the work. Yeah. So this is a little bit of a different mindset than uh, from what we just saw which yeah. um but let's get into it first of all this shot is awesome i love this photo very much for a variety of reasons the process is great the blur is great the hands the fact that uh whoever uh, the other uh, so she does the work while family yeah. and and yeah. perfect because it's like she's there but not really there so it actually yeah. feels really legit and plus it gives her an opportunity to talk about the space in which she works because we have a little visitor in there and she can clearly explain that in a story so that's really wonderful i love that shot this shot's pretty cool too um watch the crop on the head though give them give them give them more you know what you could have did on this one are you shooting with a fixed lens or you got to zoom on this zoom okay either push out uh, which I don't know what kind of adventures that brings in the background. That's your determination next time. But if worst case scenario, uh, what you could do is go a little, what I would suggest is to go a little bit lower and use these other ceramic mugs as a frame to frame her face, the one she's working on, and it's more dynamic and it can actually be a tighter shot than uh, using this background. Uh, I'm not saying either or 
I'm saying yes and think about doing this. Um, but otherwise, it's a cool shot. Just don't crop her so tight like that. Get more of her face in there. This is great. That's a that's a great detail shot. You're getting up in there. What is it? A 2470? Yeah. Do you have macro lens by any chance? I do. What what millimeter length? Oh, it's a 105. Oh wow, that's a monster. Never mind. Yeah. What are you, Canon? Uh, Nik Nikon. Oh, you are. Oh, they have a 105. Huh. I oh, use it's a, a it's a Sigma, I think, or it's not a Nikon one. Oh, it's a third party. I got gotcha. you. It's a okay. Sigma art lens or something. Yeah. Okay. Um. So the vast majority of the stuff that you'll see on my website, uh, well, it's four lenses, but one of the workhorses actually is my 60 macro. I shoot okay. a ton with 60 macro um, <clears throat> because detail shots like this just look way more delicious with a macro. And plus I can get two inches yeah. away from that and get that detail. So keep, because when we're thinking about wide, medium, and close, when we're thinking about artwork and stuff like this, where the business of the frame is super close, get up in there and make that thing a big deal by really showcasing that detail. The way her pinky is resting on, on the mug, the way that her fingers are positioned, the, br uh, the pencil or brush or whatever that is. It's pencil you know. at this stage, yeah. Yeah, so you could shoot that high from this side, from the side this way, getting the light coming in on at the dramatic end. Then you could shoot it from over the top. You could shoot over her shoulder. Kind of the same stuff as I was saying before, you know, visual variety, play space, working around where you are to be able to create that variety as you're doing it. But that close up is pretty nice. Um, yeah, so you did work around, you went around. Um, yeah, that's cool how you got that. I would make that a bigger deal by shooting just that kind of thing. Like move, move the hand out of the way and just have her hold it like this because that thing looks really cool. But this is a cool shot. Again, not either or, yes and. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a cool shot too. Getting the, the moldy thing and then doing this thing is cool. Um, I would I would suggest now I know that they're in the middle of doing real work. So it's your job since the person it's not contrived to a certain extent because it's actually happening in front of you. Wait for her to look down at the thing and capture that or just simply ask. All right. Get out of get out of where you are. Look, look to where you're looking so you can get different vantage points of her doing the thingy thing. It actually, for this one, uh, I was wondering why she was looking in the void. And in the next photo, she's not looking in the void. She's looking in the mirror because that's what they do. So the next photo um, after, yeah, that it's that she's looking in that mirror because that's how she does her shape. And I that's didn't even notice. Took, uh, no, I didn't. It took me a while. I was like, why are you so moody looking in the emptiness? And it's like. No, she's and so that's why I decided to include it because once uh, I understood that, it made absolutely, sense. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. That's a that's a good catch because it's showing how the sausage is made, right? Yeah. However, yeah. get down, get over, make this thing a bigger deal because I didn't even notice the damn thing. So yeah. make it a bigger deal by framing in. You like screen right will be the thing on the thing. The I don't know how to whatever these things are, but whatever the ceramic piece is here, that's on left, right side is showing the whole thing. Now, all of a sudden, you're bringing the activity to the audience person at home. Um, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it is tough to kind of see it <clears throat> at first because I didn't notice it. Oh, that's beautiful. Love that close up right there. That's money in the bank. Really great. Um, yep, showing the afters. That's good. And I'll continue to say this, always shoot these things from as many vantage points as possible because that particular shot, you obviously had an opportunity to have her do whatever. So that's good. Um, same thing for this one, but that's cool. I like it. Uh, it's showing off the space and how uh, uh, much of a hero you are trying to create variety in such a small space. So that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, 
a little brainstorming, looking through what they're drawing is great. Get, get this thing from a closer vantage point. What I'd also do is, unless if there's client sensitive information or uh, trade secrets or whatever, I wanna see what this stuff is. Cause this is, this is the juice right here for people that are like, oh wow, they're really putting effort into this thing. Like think about it from the person that's viewing this image and where it's gonna be, the reason why it exists. You want to get these people excited enough to get this, you know, customized art that is functional. And we want to show off every step of the process. Same thing like with the mirror and all the other stuff. Like just, just you know, get in there and find as many opportunities to create variety as possible. This is great. I like the vertical. Get it horizontal too. Um, and, and, and for this kind of a shot, get in here and shoot in between these things to make it even more dynamic. You'll have an even more of an opportunity when you frame photos, uh, frame the business of whatever the photo is within the frame. Now, all of a sudden it becomes more dynamic. Doesn't mean you're replacing this image. It just means you're adding to it. Um, yeah, that's cool. Well, what I would say here is since these people are important, if this was just a shot for a product thing for whatever this you know is, this is great, but it's not. She's the artist, show the artist, get up in there, show that face, and then get, get, it, get it to where you establish that it's her, got it. We got those couple angles, great. Then on top of that, get the close up. Don't go in this in between thing where it's half the face and that it's, it's all of it, Vantage and then the close ups of whatever is in her hand. And that's how you can get that. Um, oh, that's pretty. Pretty. I like it. Yep. And then play with the, 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 the activity where you frame her like what Sarah was doing with the person, like framed on the left and framed on the right. You do the same things with these because then it allows them the opportunity to add text and then they see this is sent, still a good shot. And on top of that, if you frame the activity of the brush on screen left and then screen right, playing different ways, it lets uh, these folks have opportunities to add branding and text in the images. So that works really well too. Um, this will work well for like a story or something. This is cool. Um, even though I have my thing about vertical, that makes total sense for what that is. And I would play even more to go over the top and fill the three bowls from the top edge to the bottom edge. Uh, this is great to add text and like, you know, for more information, go here. And then you put the tag and story or whatever that works as is. And then you could do one that actually showcases the whole thing. So when people pop, pull it up on their phone, it fills the whole frame. It looks really delicious. Um, Speaking of delicious, oh, I love brushes like that. The airbrush, oh, it's so cool. That's great. Same thought though. It's centered, good. Now go left, go right, go high, go low. Include her face. You know all the all the stuff we've already gone over. Um, this is cool to show off the bowls. This one doesn't bother me without the face on this one because of the fact that you have this negative space right here that can that. Uh, they can leverage from for uh, branding and text and storytelling purposes. So it, it works okay. Um, this is cool that this is on the left side. So you, you move it around a little bit with a little bit of space, but I would try even more next time. Really cool shot showing the face here. This is great. Now you got both eyes, nothing crop crazy. It's good. Looks good. Oh, that that's cool. This will be a great story, too, because of the fact that you could see working and then you got a final. And this thing is really cool looking. I would shoot that. I would have shot that damn thing on that ledge without anybody in the background. Open it wide open and just blow out the background so that the detail look at the, the amount of detail in that is really cool. We want to show that off because it will get people interested in their um, ceramics. And this is fine, you know, showing off the jam. I would go. You, did you shoot this completely standing up? Yeah. Like stri get low, get a little lower because you're shooting above them and making them small. We want them to be the heroes of the frame. So instead of shooting from up here, go down and shoot either at eye level where everything is is kind of eye level or go even lower to get the two of them so they look like superheroes doing their thing at the table. That's very cool, showing off another detail that they did. I really like the way that you're incorporating what's already in the space that works. Um, 
same deal here. This is cool. Again, the details, we don't, I'm not going to repeat a lot of the stuff that we already yeah. talked about. You got the, you got the gist. Um, yeah, this is cool. Showing off what's going on here. That's fine. Again, I won't repeat what I'm going to say. Okay. Is this the mascot? <laughs> He's, uh, he's, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. Diddly with it kind of guy. So. All right. <laughs> All right. We, you got what you got. That's cool. As long as it's hit, it's theirs. I guess it's okay. That's cool. I dig it. Watch the shadow. I know she's against the wall. I get it. You did the best you could. It's not that bad. Um, I would probably have gone a little wider and a little lower to get all the stuff in and her. And then the other variation would be just to get a photo of her somewhere else, not with clutter. Be like, right. this is good because it shows her in the space. That's a nice direct address portrait, but then also get maybe something where it's cleaner that you could potentially use for something else just to give variety. Um, yeah. Not a huge fan of arms crossed because I had an Eastern client. I think he was from Korea or Japan. I can't remember. A couple of years ago, I had him cross his arms. He's like, I'm not going to cross my arms. I'm like, why are you not going to cross your arms? And he goes, uh, he goes, uh, in my country, it's defensive and we don't want to convey that. I'm like, I never thought of that. So I haven't crossed anybody's arms ever again. So just keep that in mind. Even though it's like resting on the table, she doesn't have to bring her hand up. Maybe ask her if she were, ha the way you could pose people when they're on the table like this is if, um, let's say you're having a conversation with someone directly you're staring at making eye contact. Uh, so it's the camera in this sense. And you are having a conversation with them. How would you position hands? Kind of the same thing with Sarah with the with talking about being in front of the computer, you know, like changing the body position, do the same thing because then they won't necessarily just do this. They might do something else or they just might put their hands like this. Either way, what it does is it gives them uh, an opportunity to feel a little more natural in front of the camera so that they can um, don't come off as defensive. They come off as open, as giving, you know? And then that way uh, the photo feels more genuine to who they are. Okay. Oh, that's it. All right, yes. I'm gonna... It's great. This stuff's really cool. Thank you for sharing those with me. I appreciate that. I mean, they do some really cool stuff. So thank you. You're welcome. Hopefully that was valuable for you. It was. And uh, I can go back and shoot it again. So um, oh, no. give it another try. Go ahead, yeah. Don. Sorry. I think this was a fabulous uh, um, thing that you did, John. Really, really impressed. I'm, I'm impressed, and I'm sure Sophie and Sarah yes, are absolutely. pretty excited about it. I hope the people watching here and the people who watch this video coming uh, when it's you know finally uh, up. And Sarah, I wouldn't worry about your client. Um, I'm not a world famous YouTuber. I get real excited if 300 people watch it over my lifetime. I'm so, not like, worried about it. <laughs> So, I'm not worried about it. She was very to... concerned about signing a model release because she was worried about when I was doing the photos. I'm like, I'm just putting them on my website. They're they're not going anywhere. You do You're not fully really... clothed. It's not like I'm doing yeah. anything. And you do not photos. need a model release to put her pictures yeah. on your website. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, and I have. So so John, question sure. number question number two. <laughs> How do you market yourself? Do you want to spend just uh we got maybe five or six minutes or wait, yeah, man. first are there questions i gotta find out we got any questions hold on let me uh chat okay just shout them out uh, i thought that it was a wonderful presentation john couldn't have asked for anything better than that any questions i see virginia on highlighter well, so. the marketing thing is what i'd like to know as well Tell us a little bit about how you go and get clients. Now, John is in New York, so maybe he knows a guy who knows a guy, and I don't know, put a little strong arm on him. I know some guys. No, I know some nice guys. little entrepreneur business here. Shame if something should happen to it. <laughs> so I was going to say something I'm not. But what I will say is this. Um, the key to marketing, um, what I refer to as 
branded lifestyle portraiture. So first of all, uh, oh, and by the way, Don, I just finished uh, completely renovating my entire website over the past week. So when people go to johndomato.com, it is as of yesterday. I just created the homepage video to lay stuff out. Fantastic. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, and actually that ties into the first piece about my marketing. Um, I'm not talking about outreach. I'm not talking about follow-up emails. I'm just talking strictly about how it is that I position myself to the community in which I serve. For years, up until last week, my website was written and positioned in a way that essentially said, hire me, hire me, hire me. I know what you need. Um, and, it, and, and to an extent, it, it worked to help build my reputation, but not really. Um, it's more of like a, a website was more of just a reference thing for people uh, in terms of qualifying me, right? Now, the way that I have it positioned is I am the authority in lifestyle portraiture, in uh, live event photography, book photography that I do specifically for this one clientele, for this expert-based business owner. I work specifically with people who speak on stages, write books, consult and coach, train, and uh, do virtual meetings and have online communities. And what I did is write it in a way that shows them that I am the expert, I can help you with what you need, and this is all the stuff that you need depending upon the way in which you serve your people. So that's the foundational piece, is coming from a place of me being positioned as an expert, and my content supports that. By content, I write three blogs a week, 13 blogs a month. I've been doing it since August 1st, 2017. So I have hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of different types of blogs to support that position of being the authority, in addition to social posts, in addition to promotional opportunities that I share with people. Um, all of these different things are what one of my clients referred to as pegs in the board to create the credibility that you need in order to uh, uh, allow yourself the opportunity to call yourself an authority. You don't just get to say it, it's like that woman who's the coach and doesn't really know how to like that doesn't work, you know, because if you want to charge premium prices for premium service and by service, I don't just mean the folder of images you send. I mean, the handholding that you do from the very beginning of the interaction with that person from the very first call all the way up until you send those photos to them. So it's really about identifying who are the people that you serve. What are the specific problems that you solve and show them how you solve it? It's exactly what we're trying to figure out about those people that we ourselves have to do at the same time. You don't just approach your marketing like, I shoot pretty pictures, this is what they look like, hire me. No one cares, nobody cares. There's no context, there's no what's in it for them. That is all about you, it needs to be all about them. And the way you do that is by adding value through the content in which you share with people that helps reinforce the position of you being that authority figure as a shooter. You know, John, you're 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 touched on something that I'm really starting to explore. And that is uh, you're a photographer. You, you've been a photographer for a while. Advertising photographers have websites that are basically picture you know, you come to my thing and I, it's a picture. And then you look at more pictures and there's no words. They're just pictures. Yep. That's done, folks. That's over. That's yesterday's marketing. We are going to have to start telling people what we do, why we do it, why we do it our way, how we benefit them, and really focus on how we benefit them, how our style can do it. I think the day of the, I'm a photographer, here are my pictures. That's gone because as we all know, photographers now have to do a little video. They have to do a little stop motion. They've got to understand the telling a story. Many, many advertising shooters now are being called to do what John does here. And by the way, I just put up the link to Denise Jacobs. That is like, John, that's a study of what you talked about for an hour, is the work that you did of Denise Jacobs. Oh, yeah. 
That is yeah. absolutely, I mean, you got the hand writing on the marker and everything uh, that you could use that as a case study folks and like, like, you know, do that. So uh, that's what I wanted to say. I think that your, your new website, which I've been tooling around here, this is very much like, I think, advertising and promotional photographers uh, are going to have to start looking at doing this because we all know Google doesn't find images. Google finds text. And um, the market's wide, and and we have to be as wide as possible. So, more on that later. But awesome! Look, the site looks great, John. Thank you. It was made with love, including <laughs> that damn video that I shot on Thanksgiving. And then I'm like, oh god, another video. <laughs> but John, are you finding any market for video, or are you mostly stills? I don't shoot Do video for people anymore i'm so burned out of i used to work on the maury show for nine years as a producer i'm good i'm pretty good with all that i i get asked all the time um but is i mean i just barely grin and bear it for myself let alone doing it for a client i did at the beginning when i was jack of all trades and shooting everything that had a paycheck I did some video work and um, quickly realized that I quit that industry for a reason. I, I I should have been clear. I I mean motion when I'm talking to still photographers, which is video clips with no sound. The moment you add sound, you're making a video, and when you add sound, that's a whole different world. It's like sure you, is. You you're 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 better off directing, letting somebody else do the camera work whatever you come up with the ideas you tell them what to shoot let the rest of it go but uh, you know yeah. little little videos of the, the camera sliding across the book right for mm -hmm. facebook and stuff that's becoming impo important so yeah yeah the one thing that i would like to say to uh, photographers who are thinking about video is that um it does not fully translate. It is a completely different thing. There are certain commonalities amongst it, but the reality is it's not like you could just grab a camera, spend a pajillion dollars on gear, and all of a sudden you're a videographer. If you want to do high quality stuff that's going to resonate with people, you need to know what the hell you're doing. And that includes the tech, the producing, the client management, the ability to get what you need out of them consistently regardless of what mood they're in it's very different yeah. you know when you're yeah when you're working at a hundredth of a frame or an 80th of a frame or 250th of a frame you only have to get them right in that short window when you shoot video it's 24 frames a second or every second and you have to make sure that they're looking right in all of that so just keep that in mind yeah all right well are there any last questions for John? We'll let him get back to his. Uh, I know he's going to be heading over to BNH with a big giant wad of cash today. <laughs> no, they're closed already. I, I was going to say it's already it's two o'clock. <laughs> no, I'm waiting for my accountant to come back to me and tell me if I need to go buy crap so I could get more deduction. So I'm holding off on my next BNH trip for at least a week. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm, I, I've, I've said this before. I don't covet cameras and stuff like that i'm happy with my cameras and stuff but i just saw a camera that I, that's for the first time in 10 years i thought i really want that camera which uh, one for those the z9 the nikon z9 uh, let me introduce you to my friend here junior that's the z9 there you go that that camera looks to me that's like the box that, that's the it's the uh, right now in my mind. It's the ultimate visual production machine. When you can shoot 124 frames a second, full full res frames a second, you can yeah. catch those. You can catch those little moments. <laughs> I tell you one thing: the really the re I haven't used it for video at all. I use my D5 because I don't want to wear and tear it, so I'm using my backup, which is the mm -hmm. D5 as my video camera. But I will say, in terms of handling low light 
it's it's a higher it's a pain in the ass, but it's also amazing in that uh, sometimes it's a little harder with the mirrorless to be able to get that to get that focus and like not 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 with portraits I'm talking about. I'm talking about like my other stuff. It becomes problematic, but I will say it handles the darkness better than any of the other Nikons I've ever had, and um, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> well, and, you, and just think about the cropping you can do in video, ladies and gentlemen. And you're shooting oh, in 8K yeah. video. Yeah, that it can do. Yeah, for sure. It could definitely do that. And it's like, um, I just hang it out the window, crop it later. <laughs> 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 or you could be purposeful with it, Don. Yeah. <laughs> but you're right. John, it is awesome. John, thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate it so much. I will send you links you. and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and, uh, and John is uh, uh, up on Facebook as well. So you can find him. By the way, him. yeah, I will say, uh, folks, if you're interested in learning uh, about, uh, so I have this course that I'm not trying to, I, I have no date for when I'm trying to sell it. I haven't talked to you about this yet, Don, but basically over the next couple of months, I'm just sharing the experiences of the four photographers going through this six module process on on uh, my social platforms uh, and including um, my uh, the main Instagram page, Deliver Magic. If you're at any at all interested at following me, following my work, following my content, just go to the website and, um, you know, look up Deliver Magic on Instagram and, and just follow along and, and maybe there'll be something valuable, some takeaways for you. If you have questions, you just reach out and ask me. Yeah, and sign up for the newsletter, folks. It's it's. Uh, I don't get a lot of newsletters, but I get John's, and I read it every time. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, it comes in. There's always something to think about. Always something uh, fun to read. So, so he's a really, really good photographer. He's also a pretty damn good writer. So, well, thank you'll you, enjoy sir. it. Thank Everybody, thank thanks you. a lot, John. Th yes, there was thank some you. question. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Thank you, oh, everybody. You're welcome. John, thank you so yes, much. I'll talk you. to you soon. Have, Have a, a great weekend, everybody. Thank you so much. Oh, yes. Bye -bye. Thanks, Don. Bye -bye.